the Newman System Model, a closer look at stressors. In this presentation, we will be looking at an overview of the Newman System Model, as well as a deeper look into stressors, specifically interpersonal stressors. The founder of the Newman System Model. The Newman System Model was created by Betty Newman. Betty Newman got her Bachelor's of Science in 1957 and proceeded to get her Master's of Science in Mental Public Consultation from UCLA in 1966 and ended with her PhD in Clinical Psychology. After completion of her schooling, she developed the Newman System Model in 1970. The model gained global recognition within the first decade of its development. Throughout the 1990s and the first decade of the 21st century, the model was increasingly used for clinical practice, research, education, and administration. Now let's review the Newman System Model. The Newman System Model is a holistic system-based approach to nursing. It's based on the client's relationship with environmental stressors. It utilizes the use of primary, secondary, and tertiary nursing for interventions for patient system wellness. Primary prevention relates to general knowledge that is applied in a client assessment and intervention and identification and reduction of possible or actual risk factors associated with environmental stressors to prevent possible reaction. Secondary prevention relates to symptomology following reaction to stressors, appropriate ranking of intervention priorities, and treatment to reduce their noxious effect. Tertiary prevention relates to the adjustive process taking place as reconstitution begins and maintenance factors move the client back in a circular manner toward primary prevention. Continuing on with the Newman System Review, we will take a look at the different parts. The first part we will look at is the core, which is also known as the central or core structure. And this is consistent of our basic needs to survive as humans. For example, genetic structure, normal temperature, organ strength, ego structure, and response pattern. Next, the flexible line of defense. This is the most outer boundary defense of the defined client system. It is a perfect protective barrier for the client's normal line of defense or state of wellness. Next, the normal line of defense. This is a level of health developed over time by a client or client system that is considered normal for that client. Basically, it is a standard of wellness. And lastly, the line of resistance. This is a protective mechanism that attempts to return the client system back to a state of wellness. The line of resistance contains internal and external factors that support the client's basic structure. For example, white blood cells and immune system being activated are examples of this line of resistance. Now we will look at the different variables that can affect a client system. Psychological variable. This refers to bodily structure and internal functions. The psychological variable refers to mental processes and interactive environmental effects, both internally and externally. Sociocultural variable refers to combined effects of social cultural conditions and influences. The developmental variable refers to age-related development processes and activities. And lastly, the spiritual variable. This refers to spiritual beliefs and influences. So what are stressors? Stressors are environmental factors that can be interpersonal, interpersonal, and extrapersonal in nature and have the potential for disrupting system stability by penetrating a system's line of defense and resistance. We will discuss further each of these different types of stressors, focusing specifically on interpersonal stressors. How stressors can affect our patients. 
stressors can positively or negatively affect our patients. When they positively affect a patient, these stressors are perceived as positive and the patient refers to them as new stress. When a stressor is perceived by the patient as negative, it is referred to as stress. Client perception and coping ability differ from patient to patient and it is very important as a nurse to take into consideration these facts when we're caring for our patients. Now we will look at the different types of stressors. Extrapersonal stressors are external environment interaction forces that occur outside the boundaries of the client system at distal range. For example, a patient might be having financial concerns. This would be an example of an extrapersonal stressor. Intrapersonal stressors are internal environmental forces that occur within the boundary of the client system. For example, autoimmune response or conditioned response. And lastly, interpersonal stressors, which we will look at further in the upcoming slides. Interpersonal stress stressors. Internal environment forces that occur within the boundary of client system. Correlates with the internal environment. Examples of some interpersonal stressors. Nurse conflict with another nurse. For example, um, working as a nurse, we work closely with other nurses and it isn't uncommon for them to have conflicts with each other. This could be with patient care or many other things that could cause conflict between nurse to nurse. Nurse conflict with physician. So as a nurse, many conflicts can occur when communicating or working with doctor. Um, we can have disagreements with the plan of care or just advocating for a patient and not getting the result wanted, which can cause stress upon a nurse. Uh, nursing floor with another nursing floor. Oftentimes where we work, we see conflicts over admissions in this area. And nursing staff with management. Uh, occasionally nursing staff may not agree with the decisions made by the upper management. Um, examples, tightening up staff which can make it hard for nurses to provide adequate care for the patients, um, which can cause stress on the nurse. All of these conflicts can add stress to a nurse and in turn add stress on our patients. Interpersonal stressors in the workplace. Relationships with coworkers. These relationships can affect be affected greatly by stress um, in the workplace. They can psychologically and physiologically cause issues. Um, psychologically, these stressors can be mentally draining, can cause depression and anxiety in a nurse, ultimately um, diminishing, diminishing the care that a nurse can provide for her patient. Uh, physiologically, these stressors can wear on her body um, and all of these can affect the nurse's performance. And constructive coping. Uh, nurses, it is very important that we be respectful of each other. Uh, it is important to have these constructive conversations with each other to improve the relationships with other nurses as well as improving our working environment. It is in our best interest as nurses to avoid interpersonal stressors to keep up a harmonious environment for our own well-being as well as for our patients.